currently, I have Raza X running on a cloud VM using Docker Compose. And I'm now ready to start changing some of the configuration files that are on this machine so that I can connect it to other services like Slack. However, I would like to make this process easy for myself. I'm connecting to this cloud VM over SSH from my laptop. And it would be nice if I have more than just my local terminal to run all of these commands. So in this video, I'm going to show you some brief tricks that you can do with your SSH config to get a nice link to a Jupyter Lab instance, which will make editing files just a whole lot easier. Now, normally, if you were doing SSH to your virtual machine, you would use a command like SSH, you would then pass the identity file, then the user, and then the IP address of your machine. And although this will work, what we can also do is add a configuration such that we don't have to type this long command every single time we want to connect to the machine. To properly do that, what you want to do is open up a file in your SSH folder called config. This config file contains the same settings that you see in this single command, but what we're able to do is just assign a simple name to the host. And this configuration will make sure that we use the right user, the right identity file, and the right host name. If I were now to type SSH Raza X Digital Ocean, all steps are now properly automated. And I can start typing commands in here. In particular, I can go to the etc. Raza directory, and here you can find all the relevant Raza X files and folders. Now, I have Python 3 on this machine, and that means that I can run pip to install a couple of projects that might be useful to me. In particular, one thing that I can do is I can install Jupyter Lab. And Jupyter Lab is a wonderful development experience that you can connect to via a browser. But we should maybe stop and think here. After all, if we have our VM, then what you probably wouldn't want to do is open up a Jupyter Lab port that the entire internet can just connect to. That would be a security risk. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to set up SSH in such a way that our laptop, whenever we make an SSH connection, also does port forwarding. The idea is that we're going to be running Jupyter Lab on a specific port on this VM, which is going to be forwarded to our laptop over here which is going to give us a lot more control. And this is also something that we can configure in our SSH config. If you want to apply port forwarding, you can do that from the terminal as well. By specifying dash capital L, you can say that you want to forward the local host on the VM to the local host on your machine. But if you know the ports you're intending on using upfront anyway, then it might just be a whole lot easier to add this information into your SSH config file right here. With this done, I should now be able to go to Raza X Digital Ocean. And again, because I have this configuration file with these settings, I should be SSHing while there's also a port being forwarded. I have just SSHed in. So again, I can go into the etc. Raza directory. But what I can do now is I can run Python 3-M Jupyter Lab. What I can also do is I can specify a port. In this case, I'll just go for one, two, three, four, five. And when I run this, I do get a warning, namely that we are currently running as the root user and that this should be done with responsibility. I'm going to bypass this by saying, well, let's allow root access for now, but it deserves repeating that anyone with the SSH key is able to run any command via Jupyter if they're also port forwarding. I now see that Jupyter Lab is indeed running. And if I were to copy this link and paste that into my browser right now, then we can see that we are inside of Jupyter Lab. All of the files and folders that we would expect are here. And from here, it should be a whole lot easier for me to make some small changes to any of the settings files, which is nice. Finally, another thing that's nice to point out is that if I were to go to the IP address directly and pass it the port number, 
that then the site will not be loaded because the site is only being forwarded via SSH. So that means that I have a very convenient place to do all of my editing. And this setup, I would argue, especially for more personal projects, works really well.